Okay, so first some uh, quick disclaimers, since this is only a three minute video. A, this is a stock photo, so calm the heck down. Uh, second, third, uh, it the movie, uh, what is it, Jurassic Park. Um, even at that point in time, they were starting to uh, think that um, most, if not all, dinosaurs had some sort of feathers. Um, so, yeah, with those quick disclaimers out of the way, let's get into it. Did T-Rex have feathers? Um, according to paleontologists, many feathered dinosaurs once existed. Feathers preserved from more than 50 dinosaur species that lived during the early Cretaceous period, including cousins of the T-Rex, such as U. Tyrannus. Such feathers have been found worldwide, pressed into sedimentary rocks, or preserved in amber. While some feathered dinosaurs flew, others did not. Unlike in the movies, uh, T-Rex did have feathers that sprouted from its head, neck, and tail. Also, raptors had uh, feathers. Um, they didn't look anything like the ones you would see in like Jurassic Park. Um, so what were its offspring like? Like, its hatchlings most likely were covered in fine hair, akin to ducklings or chicks. Eventually they would grow larger, retaining their feathers only on their head, neck, and tail. Um, So T-Rex fossils suggest it was between 11 and 12 meters long and weighed between 5.5 and 10 tons. Held up by a stocky muscular neck, its skull was a short 1.4 meters long with ocular and nasal openings. Um, where did it live? The bipedal dinosaur lived in areas that are now considered North America, all the way from Alberta, Canada, to Coahuila in Mexico. It inhabited subtropical forests and plains with rivers, lakes, and greenery like ferns, conifers, and sycamores. And also, um, just a side note, I just remember this, the Ica stones are also forgeries. Um, those are those stones where it's like... Um, men it's depictions of men with like dinosaurs and dinosaur like beings um we're going okay, so this is part two if uh, t-rex had feathers um so it's bite uh, despite its inability to run quickly the creature's terrifying jaw full of teeth was effective in capturing prey the strength and musculature of its skull made it possible to make its bites extremely powerful you know, just like other stuff like crocodiles or trap giants or whatever. It just depends how the, the creature has evolved. Not was made, but evolved. Its deadly bite was imbued with such a strength equivalent to 57,000 Newtons. Uh, this figure isn't shocking in comparison to other large prehistoric creatures such as the great white shark. Um, uh, wow. So... Here's a reference, kind of. Humans have a biting strength of 30 kilograms per square centimeter, um, which the T-Rex has 1,500 kilograms per square centimeter. Um, so going on to the feather thing. Uh, paleontologists um, think that uh, feathers may have first evolved to keep dinosaurs warm. Uh, and the T-Rex mainly had feathers when it was younger. Um, it, when it was young, it probably had a thin coat of downy feathers, and an adult T-Rex would not have needed uh, feathers to stay warm. Large, warm-blooded animals like T-Rex or modern elephants generate a great deal of body heat, so they usually don't need hair or feathers to keep warm. Um, you know, like... Uh, like an elephant, like they still have hairs and whatnot. To me, they're, they're very ugly animals, but um, yeah. So then we go on to live science. Um, most of the 
Tyrannosaurus species featured in an exhibit were unknown to science prior to 2000. Um, early Tyrannosaurs first appeared about 1 point, or 167 million years ago, around 100 million years before T. rex. Um, these early Tyrannosaurs had relatively long arms and were smaller and faster than the giant T. rex. Uh, by the time it was about 20 years old, a full-grown T. rex would stand about 12 to 13 feet tall, span 40 to 43 feet from nose to tail, and weigh approximately 6 to 9 tons. Um, so then the feathers. Uh, wow. Uh, going on to part three. Okay, part three of the T. rex have feathers. So um, another more common um, one that was shown on uh, Jurassic Park um, were Velociraptors. And surprise, surprise, those were not accurate either. Uh, for one thing, they didn't have feathers. So like, this is a photo of a much more realistic um, Velociraptor that did have feathers. I mean, it kind of looks like a big chicken. Um, uh, so the Velociraptors were actually smaller, slower, and used its infamous claw to stab rather than, uh, yeah. In 2007, scientists found good evidence that it was covered in feathers. Um, some of the uh, fossils had distinct traces of feathers around their bodies. Some were just covered in a downy fluff, while there others like one species called Microraptor had fully formed wings and were probably capable of true flight. Uh, these species were primitive members of the Dromeosaurids, a group of small agile predators that Velociraptor also belonged to. With feathered ancestors and evolutionary cousins, it's always extremely likely that Velociraptor had a feathered coat, but until now, that was always an educated guess. Um, so a team in 1998 uh, noticed six evenly spaced knobs of bone on the back edge of a fossil they were looking at. Uh, okay. Uh, the team recognized these as quill knobs, small lumps of bone that act as attachment points for feathers. Uh, and I'll go into uh, in another uh, video, part three of the three types of feathers. Um, these knobs are direct evidence that Velociraptor carried a row of feathers on his forearm, probably about 14 by Turner's count. Um, uh, the quill knobs also suggest that Velociraptor's um, feathers had a distinctly modern style, you know, like a chicken or an eagle or a goose. They probably looked much like those of today's birds rather than hair like proto-feathers of its ancestors. Uh, several well-preserved Velociraptor skeletons have already been found, but paleontologists have never found the outlines of uh, feathers that typifies the fossils of species like Archaeopteryx and Microraptor, the famous uh, fossils. Part four of did T-Rex have feathers? Okay, what is on my mind today? There are five stages of evolution of feathers. Uh, stage one, simple fibers, as you can see in this handy dandy picture. Uh, those are hollow unbranched fibers with no barbs or bar barbules. Stage two is bundles of fibers, which are groups of unbranched fibers, each attaching to a central point. Stage three is unbranched fibers, which are rows of unbranched barbs attaching to a central shaft. Uh, stage four, barbs and barbules. Rows of barbs attached to a central shaft, which branch further into barbules. Stage five, fully developed flight feathers, which T-Rex did not have. No, T-Rex did not fly. Sadly, they did not. But like Archaeopteryx did. Barbs and interlocking barbules for stage five. 
asymmetrical shape. Uh, stage one. Uh, bristles are the simplest feathers with the stiff ratchies that usually lack barred branches. Most commonly found on the head, bristles may protect the bird's eyes and face. Uh, phyllo plumes are short, simple feathers with few barbs. Phyllo plumes. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay, so phyllo plumes are short, simple feathers with few barbs. They function like mammal whiskers to sense the position of contour feathers. Um, we haven't found too much evidence of phyllo plumes on non avian dinosaurs, uh, but a. Uh, uh, one guy said that Spinosaurus, an aquatic dinosaur, may have had phyloplumes to help it sense prey underwater, similar to that of pinnipeds and otters. Three, down feathers are similar to semi-plumes with an even looser branching structure but little to no central rachis. Down feathers are relatively short and positioned closest to the body where they trap body heat. Semi-plumes are mostly hidden beneath other feathers on the body. Semi-plumes have a developed central arachis, but no hooks on the barbules, creating a fluffy, insulating structure. <coughs> I'm going to save the rest for part uh, five. Part five. Contour feathers are what you see covering the bird's body and streamlining its shape, arranged in an overlapping pattern like shingles. The waterproof tips are exposed to the elements and the fluffy bases are tucked close to the body. Sometimes brilliantly, brilliantly colored or uniformly drab contour feathers can also help the bird show off or stay camouflaged. Contour feathers on the wing called coverts shape into an efficient airfoil by smoothing over the region where the flight feathers attach to the bone. Most tail feathers or retrices feature an interlocking microstructure similar to wing feathers. Arranged in a fan shape, these feathers support precision steering and flight. Typically, birds have six pairs of feathers on the tail, which display increasing levels of asymmetry towards the outer pairs. In some birds, tail feathers have evolved into showy ornaments that are useless in flight. The wing feathers specialized for flight are characterized by uniform windproof surfaces or veins on other side of the central shaft that are created by an interlocking microstructure, also called remiges, R-E-M-I-G-E-S. These feathers are asymmetric with a shorter, less flexible leading edge that prevents midair twisting. Impressions of feathers from the fossils of Microraptor Archaeopteryx, Archaeopter, yeah, a Keornis and Caudi, Caudipteryx showed that they and other many raptorans all had branching feathers. So we get back to the T Rex. So now we get back to T Rexes. Two Tyrannosaurids have been discovered with direct evidence of uh, feathers. Die Long and U Tyrannus. Is that where the Star Wars guy got it? Both of which lived in China during the Lower Cretaceous. These two species are important because Die Long provided evidence that Tyrannosaurs had feathers in the first place, and U Tyrannus confirmed that even large Tyrannosaurs likely had feathers. Another thing to note about U Tyrannus is that the Yixian formation where it and many other feathered dinosaurs lived would have been very cold during the early Cretaceous when these animals actually lived. I'm going to cover the rest in part six because why not? Part six. Hopefully the final part. So what about T-Rex? Once the discovery of U. Tyrannus was announced in 2012, many people were scared that not even T-Rex was safe from getting the feathered treatment. Leading to the, quote, science ruined dinosaurs movement, these fears were alleviated when a paper examining several tiny scale impressions on the back of the neck, pelvic region, and tail of the well-preserved BHI 60-20-30 specimen of Y. Rex claimed to have found conflicting patterns between gigantism and dinosaurs 
and feather integument in concluding that T-Rex was mostly scaly. When popular media outlets reported the paper, they sensationalized the study by claiming it marks a return to the T-Rex of Jurassic Park, and they were still, quote, just lizards. Um, after people had gotten used to the idea of giant, fluffy killer birds. While it is true that Rex would have been mostly scaly, these scales would give the animal a leathery appearance because of how small the scales are. Bell et I interpreted this fine by suggesting more de derived tyrannosaurs likely lost or did not have the filaments of their basal Asian relatives. The distribution of these scales lends support to the position that these animals were mostly scaly or featherless as adults, but that does not mean that they were featherless at all grown stages. Papers suggest that they might have possessed a feather cape or a mohawk on the upper part of their body. These scales might actually be uh, feathers. As the paper notes that scaly feet of modern birds are actually feathers that secondarily evolved back into scales. Authors suggest that this might have been the case with T-Rex. And as Mark Wynn notes, everybody, everyone wins a scaly versus feather debate. This is, opens up a variety of possibilities. Lynn notes that avian skin is more dynamic than reptilian skin and allows for tons of vari variations based on the animal's life stages and times of year. Changing between feathers and scales with the seasons, this can mean T-Rex was born with feathers but lost them as it got older, or it could have grown a coat of feathers as an adult had fall and molted this coat in spring. In conclusion, the Bell paper, Bell et I, concludes that T-Rex would have been largely filamentless in life and would have possessed a leathery or smooth appearance and does not disprove that it was completely featherless in all stages of, of life. It probably had a lot of feathers or covered in feathers when it was young, but then lost it as it aged and looked something like this. <sighs> like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Uh, Jesus loves you.